Coming up today, we have a different perspective on interest rates, inflation and employment for property investors. Stay tuned. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back, Tej Gill from Niger Accountants. I mean, Tej, what a phenomenal response to your last video on VAT. Now, today we're here to share the spring statement. But actually, before we do, I think we actually need to take a look at the opening statement that Rishi made. And it was a bit of a curveball. I mean, what did you make of it, Tej? Yeah, I mean, as a whole, the spring statement was had, had far more content than they normally do. Um, you rarely see actual actual policies being being put out there and, and, and figures being changed and rates being changed. So it was, it was a lot more in depth than usual. Um, but there was a lot of a lot of things he's got to deal with, I suppose. He was very positive on the whole, uh, especially for a wartime chancellor. But um, I think there's a lot of stuff in there that we need to need to unpack and go through and, and look to the future for. Yeah, well, I think one of the curveballs for me, um, given we've just been in a COVID situation, we're fighting with Brexit, we've got a Ukraine war going on, and the Chancellor is telling us tax receipts are ahead of target up. Now, how can that be? Because we've just dished out the family silver. We're, we're talking about interest rates here rising. We're talking about inflation, which is starting to rage. And then we've got employment. Tej, help the audience make some sense of this, please. So, yeah, the, um, the tax receipts are, are far higher than we were expected. I think the, the economy has bounced back. Uh, I think the growth in January was, was far higher than was expected as well. So... Businesses have done well. Um, people are out there spending money. The VAT receipts are probably, I think, what's driving the, the coffers and filling the coffers um, because people are, people are back out there on the streets. People are spending, you know, it's as if COVID no longer exists. Um, it is still out there, but people are, are, are carrying on to their credit. And that really is what, what is driving it. We've also obviously got the fuel duty. Um, and now that there was a cut announced, but the fuel, the fuel price is rising so much the um the fuel duty uh, that's collected on that is also probably swelling the coffers. So there's a few things there that um, that although we've uh, we've emptied out the the the, the coffers, um, there's a few incoming things that um, that are definitely helped with with filling them back up, and that's going to lead to potential tax cuts in the future, as 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 Rishi announced. Um, interest rates were raised earlier this month. Um, potentially they could raise again. Inflation, obviously, as you said, is rampant. Um, I think the figure of 7% percent is, is really depending on what you're looking at. Obviously, we know certain, uh, certain necessities, fuel uh, being the main one, the prices are just, just running away because of what's going on around the world. So um, I think Rishi's trying his best to get a handle on that. The Bank of England are trying their best to get a handle on that with um, uh, a small rate increase this year, uh, sorry, this month. But I think there will be more of them in the future. So the interesting thing is how that's going to affect on, you know, the, the your audience and the property investors out there. Well, I, I would agree with you. I mean, the, the, the important thing here is to look at how property investors are affected. Now, interest rates, it's really good because that's eroding the debt that... Uh, the investors hold. But at the same time, while there's inflation raging, what is happening is the prices of the properties are going up. So you, you've got a disparity where rents are rising, property prices are rising, but if you've locked into a five-year fix, you've actually got less debt accruing. Therefore, your, your profitability is actually going up in these times. So that is a real bonus for property investors. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the property price rises um, and, and we've seen them going up throughout COVID over the last two years. Obviously, before that, they were increasing anyway. Yeah. But um, the, the jump that it's had, the race for space people had wanting to move out into a bigger place and everything like that, 
it's all sort of come to a head. And now it'd be interesting to see the speed of that versus, um, you know, with the interest rate increases going on. If, if people that are locked in already, great people that are coming to the end of some terms, as you know, I know a lot of people will be on come the end of a term or one. And now we need to re, re gear those and have a look at them again. So that will be an interesting um, dynamic of how people will afford the higher payments. And then there's a higher price to pay initially, you're gonna have more stamp duty to pay, the holiday there is dropping away. So there's a number of things coming to a head at the same time. And um, it will be interesting to see what kind of pressure that puts on the housing market, which slows it down or whether it carries on as it is. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, I've got my views, you've got your views, we've talked about them before. Um, in terms of how ready you should be to move on on things, um, and I think it's it's people will be will be employing a number of different strategies. I think at this point. Well, I, I I personally, I mean, a little tip here for the audience is I would personally, if you've got equity in property, refinance it, release that equity, and be ready to go as a cash buyer on your next deals because asset prices are gonna be rising and they're going to outstrip the amount that you are paying on the money that you release. And you're effectively leveraging and getting double bubble on more than one asset then to grow your wealth. Now that is, I think, a really important thing if you're looking to create generational wealth. Now, in employment, th there's a dichotomy here in the inflation is raging. If we look at the price of petrol at the pump, it was £1.15 in January. We're now sat in March and it's £1.75. That's almost a 50% jump. When we look at it in terms of what the Chancellor's quoting or, or the Office of National Statistics or any other survey, they're saying inflation's running at 6.2%. Well, hang on, that's 50% inflation. And oil, petrol, fuel, energy prices are the prime sector of any economy. They underpin every other price increase because if they're raging at this rate, it'll ripple through to everything. So do you think from an employment perspective, we're likely to see a lot more uh, relocation of employees, which is gonna cause more rental home moves or house moves happening in the, the coming months as people trade jobs to try and increase pay because a lot of employers do two or three year pay reviews and they lock you in. And people have been locking in on 2%, 3% per annum pay rises. Absolutely. I think you may, it may even be a case that there, there was the race for space in COVID because of the working at home and everything. So people have perhaps moved from places where there was easier access to public transport to somewhere where they perhaps need to travel a little bit further now. And that's kind of with the petrol price increases and the fuel price increases now costing more to get back to where they, the, the, their workplace and get, get, get back there. So I wonder if you're going to see people, you know, maybe the rental market, you've bought a house, you're not going to suddenly sell it, but maybe those people that moved out to rent a larger place are going to rush back into the city so they don't have those fuel costs hanging over them because we don't know how long it's going to take for them to settle back down. If they ever do, we've always seen these jumps in prices is people get used to paying them and the petrol companies don't don't then drop them back down to where they should be um they obviously you know just 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 uh fill the shareholders pockets and you know I suppose why not. they certainly do and and um, there is data out there on right move indicating that people are moving back to the cities from uh the suburbs where they they moved to during covid so rental increases rental price rises in the cities are rising at the fastest rates that we've seen in a long time and i suppose tying it back then to the um to you know your audience and and, and what the kind of thing that we do as well um people heading back into the those town centers combined with the 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 development rights and i saw the government rejected some of the article fours in london as well um it, there's the, the market's gonna, gonna fill back up again um, so, you know, those, what that means for the prices in those areas, obviously, you know, people moving back in, um, higher demand, uh, supply isn't going to move at the same speed. So, you know, that looks like upward pressure on the prices again. It certainly does. And 
there was an important point that you mentioned there and if you're not already a subscriber I'd suggest you do subscribe because at this point I'll remind you in the next few days we have another video coming out about the five things most property investors have missed in this latest budget and Tej is going to be sharing those key five things with you but Tej also mentioned something really important there and that is about a challenge to the Article 4s. Now, those that are subscribers of this channel will have noted that I said last year that it is unlikely blanket Article 4s will return. A lot of councils have attempted to introduce our blanket Article 4s, and the Secretary of State has outright rejected those. Now, I will be doing a, an update video diving into the detail on this and why they failed and what they need to do to correct it. So stay tuned and you will be the first to see that in this breaking news channel. So Tej, it's worth watching. It's worth watching. It certainly will be worth watching. So Tej, as a quick wrap, what can people expect in our next video and why should they stay tuned? What, what are we going to share with them and what, what are going to be the sort of nuggets that are there in the next video about the spring budget? So most people will see the, the highlights that, you know, the Guardian or the Independent put out there about the announcements. People like you and me, we then go and read all the statements that come behind it on gov.uk. So there's a few, there's a bit more depth in there about what the, um, what the announcements uh, involve. Um, and the conditions, there's always more that comes out in the weeks, days and weeks afterwards that gives more detail. But also we're going to be talking about the implications of those highlights, those things that everybody would have heard, but actually playing them through and seeing how, how beneficial are they or how detrimental are they to your, um, to your businesses. Perfect. So if you're not already, hit that subscribe button, smash the bell icon, and you will be the first to notified when that comes out. And tell me, do you agree with what Tej and I have said today, or do you disagree? Drop a comment below and tell us why you agree or disagree with what we've just been saying. For now, Tej, Nidger Accountants, fantastic accountant, highly recommend him. And I know following our previous videos, quite a number of investors have come up to me and said, I've reached out to Tej and he's brilliant. So if you haven't already, reach out to Tej and join up with his practice because he really does know what he's talking about. It's thank you from me, Andrew Roberts. And well, thank you again, Andrew, for those kind words. Uh, and thank you from me, Ted Gill.